Good morning, everyone. I, I do love the Pentecost story because every time I read it, I learn something new. And in this time when I was reading it, what I realized was not only did the disciples feel the spirit of God in that powerful wind, but all the men, men and women in Jerusalem felt it also. So God was not exclusively showing his power to just the 11 disciples that were left. So what was Pentecost is 50 days after Easter, 50 days after the resurrection. And there's a scripture um, in John that, um, let me see if I can find it here. When, um, when Jesus was leaving his people, what he said to them was, I will be with you. My spirit will be with you. And he breathed on them. That's in the, that's in the scripture of John. And so after his resurrection, then that's when he, when he showed them his scars and they showed, showed him who he was, he actually showed him, showed those people the breath of God. And, and yet I kind of consider those 50 days between the resurrection and the Pentecost days in which the disciples were kind of holding their breath. They were afraid of what might happen to them because they were associated with Jesus and people were still angry. They locked themselves in a room and they were collectively holding their breaths. That's how I picture those 50 days. And even though Jesus had said to them, my, the spirit will be with you, I am breathing upon you, they perhaps couldn't believe it. They were too afraid. And so on that 50th day, when the wind came sweeping in, and, and there's imageries in the Bible that, that it was such a powerful wind, and it came it was with tongues of fire, and that it was just so strong that they couldn't, they couldn't doubt it anymore. And that's when they were able to speak the different languages. And then the community around them understood the languages. And our church doesn't emphasize speaking in tongues that much, but in my mind, this is an example of if you're going to speak in tongues, it means to me that perhaps there is somebody in your, in your midst that speaks a different language and that person now understands you. You know, it's not gibberish. It's not somebody, you know, just getting up and, and, and speaking so that no one can understand. It, the, if the spirit of God is there, it means that you can understand each other. So that wind was so powerful that day that everyone felt it, everyone could understand each other. And, and that was in fact, the spirit of God. Now the, the word, I don't pronounce Hebrew well, I apologize, it's ruach, R-U-A-C-H. And in Hebrew, that word means breath, it means wind, and it means spirit. So I love, I love imagery, first of all. And so I love that when we speak of the breath of God, we are speaking of, of wind and we are speaking of the spirit of God. And when I am thinking about the spirit of God and the, and the wind that comes with that, the breath of God, in my mind, that is a very gentle breeze. I kind of compare, you know, the Pentecost wind is, is compared to perhaps what happened, what, what happened in the Joplin tornado 10 years ago, and perhaps what happened in, uh, if anybody saw Raiders of the Lost Ark, <laughs> you know, I mean, that powerful wind and fire that came rushing through when the Nazis opened the, the um, Ark. And um, 
God pretty pretty much didn't want them to. And and that's kind of that strong, powerful wind that perhaps the the disciples felt on that Pentecost day. And I liken that these days, you know, that imagery is when when you have such a powerful moment with God that you know that he is speaking to you, whether that is through someone else or standing on a mountaintop or just feeling that power of God. And in my own life, that hasn't, that hasn't happened very often. I do feel that power once in a while, but the wind that I feel more often is the gentler wind is that small voice, that, that still small voice that comes, you know, and, and in my mind, I picture myself either in the morning or when I get home from work and I have the stress and the anxiety in my mind and it's just sit on my porch or, or my backyard watching my dog and I feel the breeze and I feel the gentleness of the air and the wind flow over me. And that's the metaphor that I like to think about for the breath of God. Many, many of you have heard me say before that the breath of God is God actually being nearer than breathing. God is within us. And so in order to, to breathe the spirit of God, we are actually practicing the presence of the Lord. You, we are actually practicing his presence with our own breathing. And during this past year, I've often thought that we too are sort of collectively holding our breaths. COVID has hit us in so many different ways this year. It has, it has tragically hit individuals and families and it was a disease that literally took the breath away from people. And it took the breath away from their families because they couldn't be there to help them when they were dying. And so that tragedy is now a part of our culture. And so, and those of us who weren't as, weren't that close to it, we still felt like this has been a year of collectively holding our breaths. We have isolated ourselves, some of us more than others, which is okay. I don't think, you know, as we, as we start to open up our world, I think that we need to be aware of the different types of isolation people have been in this year, some more than others, people who have um, health concerns, you know, people who quite frankly have more anxiety than others. You know, I am, I am a person that lives with a lot of anxiety and I have had to learn, and, and um, some days I'm better than others, I will tell you that right now. I have had to learn that the only way to get through anxiety and fear is to breathe. <laughs> and so with this imagery from this scripture, it really helps me to, to think about God is breathing with me. And I can breathe deeper with the breath of God breathing through me. Kanitha tried to get me to play my flute for you guys last week. And um, I've told some people before church, I haven't played my flute in a year, you know, and I'm not exactly sure why, but I can tell you that one of the reasons why now that I've kind of realized as I was preparing for today is that when I'm anxious, I don't breathe well. And uh, flute takes a lot of breathing. <laughs> Playing the flute as a wind instrument means I need to have the breath in me. And so I picked it up last night, Kanitha. It would be, she'd be proud of me. I picked it up last night and I, I, was, I was, you know, kind of putting the last parts of my, my talk together. And I said to myself, what a hypocrite you are if you don't pick up the flute and breathe into it, because that's what I'm trying to talk about today. I think that our country needs to heal. 
from this year. I think we all need to figure out how to breathe together again. And I think the Pentecost story is about the wind of God coming to those disciples after 50 days and helping them breathe again, helping them focus again. And the, another imagery that goes with the Pentecost is the dove, which I love the imagery of the dove because the dove means new beginnings. So for those disciples on the 50th day on Pentecost, they, you know, as you heard from, from Paul reading the scripture, those disciples figured out what they needed to do finally. They were able to, to breathe and Peter was able to say, this is who Jesus is. We are now tasked to do what Jesus was doing before us. They got the courage from that spirit. And all those people in Jerusalem heard them and they were in shock because all of a sudden the spirit of God was in them. And so, so here we are. May 23rd, 2021, we are opening up our country again. We are opening up our churches again. We are starting to breathe again. And I, I want us to be patient with each other because some, some of us have been holding our breath a lot <laughs> this past year. And some of us need a little help to breathe again. And I am, I am constantly reminding myself every day that God is breathing through me and that the, the stronger I feel, that means that God is helping me breathe again. And I do think that we can, as a country and as a church, really talk about what this means to us. I think it's good to have a new beginning. I think it's good that our country is gonna be different than it was before the pan pandemic, because we look at our selves differently. We look at our people differently. You know, some people are completely changing their careers because of, because of COVID. You know, they isolated themselves and maybe they even lost their jobs. But perhaps they were able to rethink their worlds. I know that I have been. And, you know, making, making difficult choices. But the, the main point I wanted to make today was Pentecost is about breathing again. It's about breathing in the spirit of God and letting go and, and having the courage to move forward into a new world. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play my flute for you. I practiced it a little bit with people before. And I, I did tell Eloise, I mean, that was such a lovely service yesterday that I pretty much, I sang Edelweiss all day yesterday because that was John Snyder's favorite song. And then when I finally picked up my flute last night, that I actually played the song without any music. <laughs> That's how much that song is just in our heads now. And it's such a beautiful song. So I played that first. And then I played Breathe on me, breath of God. And I want to thank the people who put the that particular version in our service because that was exactly how I was feeling when I was playing that song to myself last night. You know, you go back and you look at the words of that song, and it's a, it's about God breathing on us through all of our pain, through all of our struggles. And it's it's us learning to breathe again with that gentle spirit of God. So here I am. Okay, I'm gonna pick up my flute now. <laughs> I'm gonna try. So here's, a, here's another song that I played last night to help myself be still, be still and know that, I, that he is God. Sorry.
I don't know when my internet went down. So did you guys hear the flute? Yes, we heard your flute, but that was it. Okay. I'll, I really just had just a couple of closing thoughts after I, I played my flute where I said, I hope that the breath of God is with you. I hope that um, we can all find a way through, you know, getting through um, kind of opening up our worlds again, you know, to, to be sensitive to each other and to learn to kind of breathe again and open up ourselves to a new way of living in our, in our communities. So that was my little, little closing thoughts. <laughs>